Evening guys and welcome back to The What Life. I just want to say one thing before we get going this evening is a big thank you to everyone for joining in and just kind of encouraging me and being so nice uh, in the comments because tonight is the first night I've been in a Cat B race and I felt like I've belonged here and I really, I just really enjoyed it guys. So I appreciate everyone that's kind of even if you've just liked or, or commented, because quite simply, a lot of the time, that is, <laughs> that's kind of the only thing that stops me from quitting races uh, some of the time. So I appreciate it. Right, we're getting going. And this, as always, a big group for a Monday evening prime time Swift monthly race, 160 riders. And we're out the gate hard and fast as usual. So to give you some stats, we are doing Nyoko Nights, Twilight Harbor. It's three loops. Total length of the race is 21K, 13 miles, with a little smidge of elevation in it, about just over 100 meters, 111 meters, which I will be honest, I didn't feel the, the elevation in this at all. You know, even in the, the race last week, the, the Zed Monthly race last week, I didn't feel the elevation in that one. I didn't feel the elevation in this one. These groups are flying. They're super fast. Um, if you're in the draft, it really is a massive advantage. And I'll go into that in a bit because I've got some quite interesting stats for you in terms of which lap was actually the fastest, but relative to wattage as well, which I thought was quite interesting. But first and foremost, guys, yeah, sorry, just to say um, I, I do appreciate it because all those times, you know, I've, I've I, I'm definitely not the best cyclist as, as you guys will see and have seen but I do absolutely love it. And there's been times when I've been dead last or falling off groups. Um, and tonight was, was different. It felt different. I felt like uh, I kind of, I felt like I belonged here. And I, you know, I've got no sprint on me just yet, but I felt like, okay, I can do this. And it, it kind of that little sense of confidence that I think I have needed. And a lot of my improvement has, it hasn't come from one particular thing. It's just like lots of tiny, tiny little improvements along the way that have kind of just enabled me to feel more comfortable and get to this point. And I still know I've got a long way to go. Anyway, let's talk about the racing this evening. So first and foremost, we dived in. I joined in the 610 race. And the reason I did that was because earlier in the day, I checked the amount of people that were racing in the 510 and the 610. It looked like more people were in the 610. I thought, well, it's going to be a bigger race, which mean it'll be, means it'll be a faster race. I don't know why. I'm a glutton for punishment. I do love the faster races. So I thought I'd dive in that one. So just to give you some stats, the 510 race, the Cat Bs, they finished this in 28.39, which is uh, a you know, phenomenal time. Most guys finishing around you know, 3.6 through to 3.8, not too many 4, four watts per kg guys, uh, unless they are on the slightly smaller side. Now I'll dive into our race and just say that we finished in 27.44. So I'll give you those numbers again. 28.39 for the 5.10 and then we finished in 27.44. I say we, it was uh, P.T. Wheatstraw who by all accounts looks like an absolute diesel machine of a rider. Been in a few races that he's he's won. <laughs> um, high, night, registers as 96 kg on Swift Power. He's got a 1250-15 second kick on him, sprint on him, however you want to you know, kind of put that down. Um, the guy can just, I presume he drinks diesel for breakfast because uh, it feels like, you know, these are the types of races that are, are suited to someone of that kind of, those kind of stats, someone with a big 15 second sprint on them, uh, someone that can just kind of churn out big watts because it is, they are, these are flat courses and, you know, the same reason that I kind of, they, they've, they've kind of given me the confidence to ride with the group because there isn't too much variability in the terrain. So the big groups tend to kind of be able to stay together a little bit. And I think that's kind of what carried me through last week uh, when we did the Nyoko Knights race. And then the same thing this week is that you get in the group, you find your position, and if you can hold your wattage, then, you know, it's harder to drop off. You know, a, a, no one is going to be able to ride off the front of these massive groups, although a few guys do actually try uh, today. But So as mentioned, guys, we have three loops of this course. Let me just dive into my Strava for you. Now, three loops. Um, this is my times for the loops. They, they're going to be different for everyone, right? And obviously, because, because the it looks like our front group is 140 people, or 140-ish out of 160-odd riders. 
So, you know, there is a huge amount of variability. There can be like you know, three, four seconds between the front of the group and the back of the group. So I will say that it will be different for everyone, you know, but um, for me, my first lap was the fastest. We clocked that one in at 8.57. My second lap was the slowest coming in at 9.07. And my third lap at nine minutes on the dot was my second fastest, right? So first is the fastest, second was third, and then the last lap was my second fastest. However, in terms of watts, it's slightly different. So my first lap, 297, my second lap, 289, my third lap, 305. And obviously there is a, you know, on the first lap, you, you get that kind of fresh off the line uh, enthusiasm. On the last lap, you obviously get the kick from, and we're gonna do inverted commas, uh, the sprint. A bit of racing info for you. Uh, for some reason, I found myself at the front of the race here, and I, I did just say that, um, you know, something must be wrong if uh, I find myself at the front of the race. And the only reason I said that, guys, is because genuinely I am feeling more and more uh, comfortable. And I'll, I will caveat this with because it is a flat race, because there's no hills where people can kick up and, and dive off of. You know, it did make me feel a little bit more comfortable in the group. So... You know, I, I always try to position a little bit better. Sometimes I drop to the back and then move back back through. But I, I kind of felt, and you can see that on my power uh, chart down at the bottom, those little green sections that we've gone through towards the back end of the first lap, they were really good for me to develop and get my recovery. And then someone quite nicely says that um, it feels that way you know or because my zwift fdp has been improving I, I agree with you like uh, i have been i've been putting in the work first and foremost and one of the things that i do think has, has really helped is and i spoke about this months ago is working on my low cadence strength work <laughs> and um when i talk about that i do it in two ways i do two things right i do my my first thing is kind of finding a flat pace group and just basically sitting at 55 to 65 RPM and holding a reasonable wattage, like for me, sorry, reasonable, bear in mind my, my FTP inadvertent commas is, is around 300 watts, if that. Um, I'll try and hold like 265 watts, but do that at a slower cadence, so I'm building uh, real strength. That's my, first, that's my first session on the flat. Then my second session I will do, where I literally crank out 45 to 55 RPM doing a climb portal and then the watts won't be won't be quite so much like 2 220 240 something like that and those are the two sessions i do and that hill climbing session that's super slow right super slow and the reason i do that is something that in in the strength training world we call time under tension which is basically how long you that singular muscle is engaged for per revolution and if you think about it you know, often if you're spinning really fast, the, the engagement time for a particular muscle is very short. So what I want to do is build strength. Or I want to have like a real, ba I, you know, I want to I want to be a P.E. Wheat short. Like <laughs> I want to be a diesel engine. I want to be able to knock out like really strong watts um, and I want really strong legs. And to get really strong legs, you have to work your muscles, but not only work your muscles, you have to work the particular muscle fibers that are responsible for turning the pedals, right? So the best way to do that is doing it on the bike. And yes, you can do strength sessions and you can do strength exercises, but that develops uh, every part of your muscle or a different part of the muscle. So the reason I do 45 to 55 RPM and just crank out some, some wattages, nice low heart rate, uh, or try and keep my heart, heart rate reasonably low, certainly below 150, and that's for me, guys. That's relative to, to me. Um, <clears throat> but it, what it does is it takes the muscles that are really responsible for the pedal stroke and it makes sure that the time under tension for that, that muscle, particular muscle, is high because it obviously takes you longer because you are turning the pedals nice and slowly. And you're putting a, a long, a, that amount of force that you're putting through the pedal actually is incurred for longer into that muscle and hopefully that is what's going to break the muscle down and encourage it to grow back bigger and ergo develop strength so that's my reasoning behind it and that's those are the two things that i do at least once a week or sorry that that is the one thing i do at least once a week which is a low cadence session and i'll either do it on the flat or i'll do it on climbing i really enjoy it because it's not there's no intensity to it so the aim is to keep my heart rate quite low so the intensity of it is is reasonably low but at the same time 
um, it's not quite a zone two session because you are working neuromuscularly quite quite strong. You're having to like really put down some effort. Anyway, diving back into the race, guys. Um, I thought I'd kind of miss out, you know, much of you know kind of end of lap two start of lap three because there's there's so many people and i'll be honest with you like as nice as um these neoko races are like they've been a bit <laughs> they're a bit too flat now <laughs> um and, and i can't believe i'm saying that but with this number of people you know uh sitting sitting in the draft is you can get like a very different it's a very different race and uh, i'll be honest with you i actually i can't believe i'm going to say this but i did this race on thursday morning and I think there was like 12 of us and I just couldn't hold on to the group. I, I think I've been doing maybe a bit too much. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to do Zwift Academy. I try and try and do Zwift racing on a Monday night. Now we've got Zwift racing league on a Tuesday night. Like there's just a lot going on. Um, I, I ended up dropping off the group. Uh, I think it was like 12 or 14 riders on, on Thursday morning when I had a second crack at the Nyoko race and I, I came off the back of the group about a mile and a half i think from the finish and i was super disappointed in myself and i was like I'm, i was like well in terms of wattages it was a lot easier than the race that we'd done on the monday night but for some reason you know i was just struggling to stay on um or, or struggling to work but the reality is is that less people less draft less places to hide so and also i just think my my fatigue was a little bit higher but these big groups you know you might get pushed out to the side but then if you can work and what i have found is yes um my effectively my threshold is, has kept nudging up ever so slightly like one watt or you know one watt two watt every kind of now and again every other week and it's got to the point where i'm feeling just that little bit more comfortable so anytime the the speed spikes i'm not like completely blown out the water by it and just to give you like a full breakdown on this, which I think is quite interesting, tonight I actually hit uh, my kind of all-time PB in terms of I held 3.9 watts. Um, my average was 298 watts, so just under 300 watts for this race. And as we said, this came in at 2750 for me. So, I mean, guys, like I'm super, like I'm so happy because... I feel like I can start on a on a Cat B start line on a flat race, and we'll, we'll asterisk it, on a flat race, and be part of the, uh, you know, at least the train, be, be a part of the carriage that, that, that is a part of the race. Um, I think I've got a little ways to go before I'm up there with you, Ollie, where we are kind of driving the bus or sitting at the front, because that's not quite, I'm not quite there yet, but that's where I want to get to. I want to be able to feature in a race from a like kind of changing the dynamic perspective that's the goal so look i'm in the mix guys i'm in the mix with 0.4 of a mile to go so whatever that is 800 what just yeah 800 meters seven seven eight hundred meters um i knew that i wasn't really going to have a sprint in me because the, the pace had picked up uh even though you know this the third lap was only three seconds slower than the first one Everyone, I got done dirty by Zwift this week because I got quite, I think I got three ghosts in total. I'm not, not complaining because I, I knew I wasn't going to have a sprint anyway. Get the heart rate back up. I think I touched 600 watts. So I don't want to say, like, obviously that's not like sprint sprint. I know that, I, you know, I've got a, I've got a fairly reasonable um, kind of sprint max, well, max sprint effort on me. But that wasn't, to, that wasn't to be seen today. But again, guys, really, really enjoyed it. And interestingly, I did obviously my out to Swift video. That's where all those uh, power curve PBs are. And we're, we are a little bit off that. But guys, all in all, I am super happy. So thanks for joining in and I'll see you in a race soon.